You're listening to Tory Writers' She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. Marcy is dreading her upcoming arm surgery, but she's looking on the bright side. She will be able to drive her new car once she can figure out how to drive her new car. Also, there's the small matter of the large item she accidentally bought online. You're nervous about the surgery on your arm. Uh, yes. Well, you have a right to be nervous. It didn't go well last time, so that's fair. It never goes well. <laughs> what will you do if it actually is a miracle cure and it works like like magic? I'll go try out for the NHL <laughs> or the NBA. Yeah. Because I am so tall. Yeah. Um, well, you could. I don't know. What is the game they used to play where they'd put you on someone's shoulders and play basketball? What was that? You could do that. Water polo. I don't I, know. Is that what that is? <laughs> what do I know? Speaking of water polo, I, I have, I don't know if you amuse yourself. My life must be very dull, but sometimes I amuse myself by thinking about what luxury I value the most in my life. And I, yeah. I, I've i decided it's hot running water. That's what I've decided. That's a good one. Yeah. It's important. I think hot running water. I think I could live with most things if I had access to hot running water. You well, can't take a cold shower? Well, those are pretty useless. But it changes. Sometimes it's a car. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a car is pretty much my biggest need out here. With the new car, I should be able to drive because before with Juke Perry, I couldn't really drive without my right arm. Mm. And now with the new grandparents' car that we have, there's just like this little dial thing. It's so weird. That'll scare me. Like the that. new cars, I'm afraid to buy a new car. I don't know if my brain can expand to accommodate the things that I would have to learn to just. I'm, it's I'm really high tech. It takes Eve, the 28 year old, like two seconds to punch everything in. He's shown me a thousand times and I still can't turn on like the air conditioner. Post it notes. Like, You'll have some kind of fender bender and the cop is going to come up and say, ma'am. And then she or he is going to look at your car and realize that the entire dashboard is obscured by post it notes telling you how to drive your new car. And that exactly. is what I'm afraid of. I have nightmares about a lot of things, but I test drove a Tesla a couple years ago and, and yeah. I just retreated like animals where you jump up and down and wave things like they tell you how to make a bear go away and then the bear kind of shambles off into the woods. I, yeah, I, that doesn't work. I felt like that was my test drive though. I, I, I got behind the wheel of the Tesla and and I drove it from one freeway entrance to the freeway exit. And I turned around and I got back and I was just sort of panting like a dog. Like, <laughs> and I, I just shambled off into the woods and I haven't been near a new car steering mechanism since. Well, Frankie doesn't drive this car very often at all. He's usually driving a truck. So he'll ask me questions that I don't know the answer to. How embarrassing. And so then I know. Then I'll ask Eve that question. <laughs> Same question. Yes. She'll show me, and then I'll do it, and then immediately forget. Post-it it notes. Like... Post-it <laughs> notes are the only thing that stand between me and the abyss. You know how in the movies they put um, a mirror in front of somebody dead's mouth to see if they're still breathing? I, I... I did that to one of my kids when they were a baby. <laughs> That's right. You got nervous a lot, as I recall. No, I just had, I had crazy loud Molly, and then I had really quiet Ben. And so, yes, I would put a little mirror by his little mouth to make sure he was breathing. Yeah, well, in my breathe. case, you're going to have to take down all the post-it notes and see if I notice. And if I don't notice that the post-it notes are gone, then you'll know that I'm still alive, but there's nothing in there at all. <laughs> well, I keep meaning to go get the owner's book out of the out of the uh, glove compartment. I thought you said it was all online so that you could have an accident learning how to drive your car while you drive your car, thereby well, enabling the manufacturer to sell you another car and repeat. Yeah, I printed it all out and shoved it in the glove compartment. That's a good solution. I print out like almost everything that, that I look at that I want to hold on to, like recipes. Well, <laughs> Monday, 
we had like a lot of leftovers from the weekend for some reason. So Frankie made quesadillas on Monday. Mm -hmm. And I looked up a quesadilla recipe. What? What? I That's like looking recipe. up a peanut butter and jelly recipe. What do you mean you looked up? I know, a... I know. He laughed at me too. You take your tortilla, you stack <laughs> a bunch of crap on it, you put the cheese on top, you're done. Oh. I went to print out a recipe, and usually they're two pages long. Mm -hmm. And I go in, and there's like 20 pages, and they're like flying into the air all over the place. There's For so a quesadilla? I make a quesadilla. What does it tell you how to make the tortilla by hand on a rock? And no, it, it like has all this stuff, like how to store it after you make it, how to freeze it. How to defrost it. Oh my I mean, it, it was just like page after page after Well, because page after page. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that is. Because if you're asking how to make a quesadilla in the first place, <laughs> then clearly you don't have the sense it takes to put your hands together and make a little steeple with your fingers and do little rabbit foo-foo. If this is what you're asking your little computer... <laughs> It is happening through the forest. That's right. So then it sends you to idiot land, and that is where you end up. Like how to defrost something. Take it out That's of the freezer. Idiot well, it takes you. This is don't ask it stupid questions. There's your <laughs> so much for AI. No, I gotta quit asking Jeeves everything. Yeah, stop That's... asking Jeeves things. Quesadillas. Why don't you just ask it how to make popcorn while you're at it? <laughs> This is what happens when you get old. And by the way, now, I'm to the point where anything that happens, I look to see if it's fatal. You know, like if <laughs> if, if my eye starts to twitch, I'm looking that up, you know. And printing it out. If if I leave the faucet running, like even dripping, oh, I got to go look that up to see if I have dementia. I It's like I have a list. <laughs> I have a really long list of everything that may or may not be wrong. But everything seems to be a symptom. Neither one of us can stay on point here. I think that's a sign of old For sure. ADHD. Although, if we go with that, I've been old forever. Because my producer, way back in the day, used to hold up a plastic fork when I had left my main point. Yeah. My guy would just mute my mic and yell at me over my headphones. We're, we're having the last days of warm weather, nearly record-breaking weather and I can't really enjoy it because I got up to work at four o'clock in the morning. And Ugh. when I have to do that, it's basically like the graphic you should imagine is just taking the day off the calendar and just ripping it in pieces and throwing it in the air. You are not a morning person, I know. Well, four in the morning. And you don't really sleep. I had the weirdest, weirdest dream about the small cutie. It was, uh -oh. it, it, I dreamed he had a physical ailment that required some kind of reverse injection where you put in a needle and you suck out disgusting stuff and i'm like what what kind, where did i even come up with this like some horror movie is this a halloween thing where did this the it is almost halloween the only dreams that i remember are the ones you have when you, when you can't quite sleep and so they get stuck in there, like trying to open a can when the can opener just kind of won't turn properly. So you've got a half open can. That's that's me trying to sleep when I know I only have four hours. You get halfway through the can and you're like, it's it's stuck. What what now? When I know I have a deadline up that I have to be up for, I pretty much wake up every hour yeah. to look at my clock yeah 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 go back to sleep. just to make sure you haven't overslept absolutely speaking of deadlines i did turn in the audiobook i have not heard whether they're going to spit it out or not but having forced myself to focus on engineering the audiobook i just gave myself permission to do very little else so now I look around my studio and and I'm kind of mortified at, at the piles <laughs> This is the next project waiting. And may I say that there is nothing more dangerous to me than the mental phrase, but these could be worth something. Um, okay, I have a story about that. Yes. Did I tell you about my adventure with Deal Dash? What is Deal Dash? It's like eBay. Okay. But it's but it's like in real time. Like you're bidding against people and you can see what they're bidding. Like, um, I, I can see that Tory bids 10 cents and I'm going to bid 20 cents. And it's just all kinds of stuff like TV sets, 
everything. All, they were, there was a big, horrible. It sounds like more. the worst thing in the <laughs> world. I was bored, but this gets worse and worse. But I came across this leather corgi, like the dog, you know, a leather corgi, like ottoman. a stuffed. Uh, oh my lord, it's an ottoman and it's a leather corgi, and it's made by some guy who's designer famous, whose name I can't remember right now. But I looked it up on the internet to see how much it was worth. And they're all sold out. But the last, it, but it, it sold, its retail price was $2,050. Oh, don't ever look at the retail price. Well, this story gets worse. Oh, no. I, didn't, I don't like it. I didn't want it. But this lady that was bidding on it was like really annoying me. So I kept out bidding her, oh, like no. just by sense. Oh no! Until, and I'm talking about this took hours, and it's just because of this one lady was just, she was just annoying. I can't even describe. I don't know her, but she was aggravating the crap out of me. What did she so put like little it. notes up? Like, gee, hope I get it. Smiley face, smiley face. I, I don't, I don't know. Love these. I, I have a so. corgi. N none of that. I didn't like that she was in Connecticut. But, um, yeah, I what if we have, have a person. listener in Connecticut? I think we do have a listener in Connecticut. Uh -oh. Yeah, find this lady because I've got her. I've got her corgi ottoman sitting in this box right behind me. That um, <laughs> I paid thirty five dollars oh, for a penny at a time, and I don't. Yep, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it because my dogs will probably pee on it. My cats will use it for a scratching post or whatever. It's ugly, and um, we have it in the box in case if we can sell it for a thousand bucks. You're gonna have to take a picture of it and put it on the Instagram. Feed. I will. I will. First thousand bucks goes. I'll I'll get the name of the the, the fancy designer that uh, that I did said two thousand five fifty dollars on his website. Did it say how many of them he actually sold for that? And no, but he's got like giraffes and all kinds of oh, other Lord. weird old leather things. And they don't have faces. Well, There's how no do you eyeballs. even know it's a corgi then? Well, because you can tell by the color and the shape, I guess. But I was going to draw like little X's for eyes. Like no, it's a dead no, corgi. Because no, no. it's an ottoman, right? <laughs> But, but yeah, I don't, we don't know what to do with it. So it's in this giant box sitting in the studio. I have to ask you, this may sound like a weird question, but how does it smell? That doesn't smell. Okay. Because a lot of times you buy, if you buy inexpensive leather, it, yeah, no, it this smells is like dead bodies. Yeah. No, there's no smell. So it's and a I mean, it's real really, one. It's very sturdy and well made it's just what don't try do. and sell me your dead corgi don't, yeah, don't try. i can't even I'll get you to send you me a spider it. that goes up and down my house actually i gotta take a picture of the spider on his back and then i'll send you both i don't want your corgi i have people people buy me the weirdest things i yeah. i have a girlfriend i truly love her she's got a bit of a shopping gene and because we have chickens, for a while there, she was sort of finding every weird, like, there was a weird chicken purse that was very expensive that she gave me that sat in my closet for three years. And I'm like, I'm not carrying a rubber chicken purse around, no matter how expensive it was. And I, I have one of those. I passed it along. And then she got me this giant folk art metal garden sculpture chicken thing that she schlepped back from some island holiday and i she tried to give it to me I'm like because we are such good friends i can tell you, you said no do not give me that <laughs> i love you and you love me and because we love each other if we were not such good friends i'd have to drag this for stunking a chicken a translation stinking chicken back to my home and then do what with it? I mean, you can't even hang lingerie on it because it's folk art. So it has jagged edges. I'm sure, I'm sure it's a great way to open up a vein at night. If you run into it, I, I don't want any part of it. People give me weird stuff and they are like, aren't I clever and creative? I had to get the clever and creative thing out of my husband's vocabulary when we were first married. 
<laughs> I'm like, no, that's my job, not your job. Don't overthink it. I'll send you a link, and then you can buy it and present it to me, and that'll work just fine. We'll stay married. Yeah. Well, I do have this giant leather corgi. <gasps> Assuming you've come this far because you enjoy the podcast, may we recommend my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air. It's available at your neighborhood bookstore or on Amazon. And if you're feeling especially generous, please leave the podcast a good review. Thanks.